Hey everybody, it's Kim again, and welcome to part 2 of Layout Character Posing in Toon Boom Harmony. In this video, I'm going to be drawing the rough poses that we need in our layout of this character that you see on the right hand side here. You can see all of his posing happening in the storyboard on our left hand side. So I'm just going to be putting those in on my environment that you see on the right hand side here. But you can see that as we go past frame 1 of our environment, it disappears. So I just want to expose this environment all the way to the end of our timeline. So I'm going to make sure that my environment layer is selected. I'm going to go all the way to the end here. And I'm going to press F5 on the last frame. So now we can work on our character posing without worrying about the background disappearing as we work. So let's look at the first pose we need to do. Here's our storyboard and we don't have any character showing up until this frame over here which is frame 7. So that's where we're going to put our first drawing for the character. You can add an empty drawing or a new frame by drawing immediately onto the screen and it'll automatically add the frame for you. Or you can manually add the frame by going to this toolbar on your timeline and pressing create empty drawing. If you don't have this toolbar you can find it in Windows, Toolbars, Timeline View. We're going to go back to our environment now and we're going to draw in this pose for the environment where it needs to be. The catch here is that this scene is zoomed in. So we have to make sure that we're doing the, the right size relations for the character in order for the layout to echo what's happening over here. Sometimes the drawings in the storyboard are accurate enough that you can trace them and move them over. In this case, the drawing is relatively accurate and the character is quite small so we can actually go and trace that if we need to by turning on our light table in the bottom left hand corner here and just tracing the character on the bitmap layer that we created for our character layout. I created a new color for my drawings. I like to work in color for roughs and I've given this color slight alpha just to give it that sketchier look. So now I'm going to do the first drawing for my character layout. So here's my first character pose. I've just done it by tracing the pose in the storyboard and changing some things to make it a bit more on model to the character you see here in the model view. I'm just going to select him and drag him across to the layout that I have on my right hand side here and I'm going to adjust him so that he fits into this layout just like he does in the storyboard over here. Okay, now I'm going to move on to my next pose where if we scroll through our storyboard you can see it happens on frame 13. So again, I can trace the storyboard here, but this character is quite off model. Or we can draw it straight onto our layout over here. But the problem is we need to see the size of the character that we previously drew. And in order to do that we'll have to turn on our onion skin. 
And you see the minute that we turn on our onion skin, we still can't see what's happening here. And that's because you need to drag out the arms in your timeline in order to see as far back as you need to. So here we can see him very lightly, but he's there. And what we can do is add a new drawing to our frame 13. And we can use just a basic skeleton from the storyboard to make sure that we get the pose the same. Drag this over, adjust it, make sure it's the same size as the drawing you drew before, and that it's placed in the right spot. So remember he's tripping on the edge of the rock here and he's going to fall forward into the space over here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this character now. Okay, and there's my second layout drawing for my character. Now, if you want to see how these drawings work together, you can go scrolling back in your timeline. Turn off your onion skin, go scrolling through. It's a little bit tedious though. What you can do is use your G and F keyboard buttons on your keyboard and that will flip you through your drawings. So G taking you forward and F taking you back. And another option is to use the easy flipping toolbar, which you'll find by going to Windows, Toolbars, Easy Flipping. And this can help you scroll through the drawings that you have available on your timeline. So that just makes it easy to flip through, see if the drawings work together, if the sizes are right, if everything's sort of going to plan. And again, if we go scrolling through this, you can see that this drawing disappears before it gets to the next drawing. We don't necessarily want that to happen. We want it to kind of look a little bit like the animatic here where that drawing stays put until the next drawing appears. So in order to do that, we're just going to go to the frame before the second drawing and press F5 to expose the frame before it. And now we have that drawing exposed for the spaces between both of those drawings. And those are our first two layout drawings. I'm going to go ahead and carry on putting in my frames throughout this layout. Again, don't worry about the camera movement, just worry about getting the character placed more or less where he needs to be in the background. And then when, we, when I get to this final drawing, I'm going to show you guys a little trick with regards to the last drawing. So I'll see you there. I'm back and I have done all of my layout drawings, as you can see here in my timeline. I've got a whole lot of new drawings. Except for the last drawing, which you can see and the storyboard looks like this. And the reason why I didn't do that one is because I'm not going to go and redraw a drawing that looks exactly the same, but just has an expression change on the character. So what I could do is I could go create a new frame here and copy paste what I have from this drawing onto that frame and then change it. In this case, what I'm going to do is actually duplicate the frame before. So I'm going to go all the way to the end of my timeline, press F5, go back to the frame where the expression changes, which is frame 98, and
And instead of putting in a new frame, I'm going to use this button here, which is duplicate drawing. When you duplicate a drawing, you make an exact copy of the frame that you duplicate, but you'll be able to edit the frame without worrying about editing any other frames that are like that one. So for instance, if I now go and make some changes on his face, you'll see that the drawing before that remains as we left it. So we're just editing the face here because that's all we need to edit. And there you have the final layout pose. And the only thing we need to do now is go back and expose all of the drawings in these empty, empty gaps. And a nice fast way to do that, instead of going and clicking on each one exposing them, is just to select these empty spaces by holding down shift and clicking. And then going to this button over here, which is Fill Empty Cells. And it'll automatically fill those gaps for you. So now we have a completed character pose layout that looks good and ready for production. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye!